Okay, pet fans, so I've gotten a lot of requests to go over splenic tumors, so let's finally talk about this. But a bit of a fair warning, this is going to be a little bit of a long and a dark topic. Dark like my soul. That's yeah, too dark. Dark like my morning coffee? And it's still not light enough. Morning coffee with a splash of silk? All right, now that's just gross and it's getting weird. Just play the riff, Biscotti. So I'm going to start this video by telling you that the spleen is just a very vascular organ inside the abdomen that stores red blood cells and platelets, and unfortunately, it's a really good spot for tumors to grow on. I know, that's probably the greatest opening since Kevin dropped the pot of chili at the beginning of the office. Now, when we're talking about tumors in general, there's two basic types. There's malignant cancerous tumors, and then there are benign tumors. And when we're talking about malignant cancers of the spleen in dogs, a type of tumor called hemangiosarcoma is going to be the undisputed champion, and in cats, mast cell tumors and lymphoma reign supreme. And in dogs, depending on the study that you read, roughly 65 to 70% of all splenic tumors are going to be the malignant cancer known as hemangiosarcoma, which is a cancer of blood vessels. And since the spleen is a very vascular organ, it makes sense that this type of cancer is so common. And a huge reason why tumors on the spleen are so concerning, you know, other than the fact that they're cancer, is that the spleen and its associated tumors are very vascular. So these tumors will grow so big until they eventually rupture and then just constantly pour blood into the abdomen. Think of it like trying to fill up a water balloon until the balloon pops and then you just don't turn off the water. Now that leads to something that we call a hemoabdomen, which is either by itself fatal or it's a time-sensitive emergency. And unfortunately, the only way to fully stop the bleeding is to go in surgically and remove the tumor. And honestly, most dogs tolerate the surgery and survive it just fine, but a lot of people don't pursue surgery or it's just not recommended because of the statistics. Again, remember that 65 to 70% of all splenic tumors are going to be the malignant cancer known as hemangiosarcoma, and 65% of those malignant cancers will have already started to spread by the time we make the diagnosis, even if we don't see any evidence of it. And couple those statistics with the fact that survival rates of hemangiosarcoma if we do surgery and chemotherapy are still only four to six months on average, it is a very fair decision if owners just don't want to pursue surgery given those odds. And to make this condition even more of a pain in the ass, if we don't see evidence of metastasis on other diagnostics, the only way for us to know if a tumor on the spleen is cancerous or not is to go in surgically, take the tumor out, and send it off to a lab for analysis. Now, I might as well just keep piling on the shit-tastic news when it comes to this lovely condition by letting you guys know that I find there are two things that owners really struggle to come to grips with when it comes to this condition. The first thing is that this type of cancer does not show up on routine testing. It doesn't show up on a blood panel, and it doesn't doesn't always show up on x-rays. The only way to know if this cancer is here is to do periodic ultrasounds of your pet's belly or this fancy new blood test that we just came out with a couple years ago, which is becoming a little bit more commonplace. And the second thing is that there usually is no sign that this cancer is present until after it has ruptured, which these are the signs after it's ruptured. And here are some of the things you might see before it's ruptured. And after the tumor ruptures, the story is literally always the same. Your dog was perfectly healthy and fine in the morning. You went out and you came back. Maybe your dog wasn't eating or was lethargic or collapsed in the yard or had breathing changes and you bring it in and it's on death's door. These types of tumors unfortunately can spiral downhill very quickly. Now yearly screening and exams with your family veterinarian can go a long way in early detection and if we do find a concerning looking mass on your dog's spleen, most of us will recommend surgically removing it even if it's not bleeding to prevent it from bleeding in the future and to also confirm if it is or is not cancer so that we can talk to you about chemotherapy if you'd like to pursue that. 